This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us open our hearts to the Holy Spirit. Let us worship together. Divine teacher, whirl around us with your wisdom. D divine comforter, encircle us with the peace that comes only from you. Holy winds, empower us to live God's hope in this world. Holy fire, empower us to create a world of peace and justice. May the divine gales of this day move us to know the love of God. Our opening hymn is All Creatures of Our God and King, number 64 in the Burgundy Pilgrim Hymnal. Please stand if you like. Surround us. 
Fill our minds with the knowledge that your spirit will lead us forward. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession, which is printed in your bulletin. Loving God, divine comforter, peace is absent from our hearts, from pain to grief, and from turmoil to frustrations. We yearn for what we lack. We ache for the pains and injustices of this world to cease. What we forget is to pause and voice our concerns to you. How can we better integrate your presence into our lives? When have we forgotten to include you in our joys and heartaches? Move us to seek you and speak the burdens of our hearts to you. May your spirit refill our souls with peace. Amen. The Spirit of God delivers grace and peace. And move and we as we move through our journeys and inspires us to connect with God and neighbor, to create a world of hope and joy. Amen. I'd like to invite you to share your prayers of joys and concerns with one another. I just want to welcome everyone here today, and um, I want you to notice the flowers that are on the base of the altar, and they are from our friends in the English Neighborhood Reform Church. Thank you so much. Laurie, do you want to say something about the tour? Oh. Oh, loving God of grace, thank you for answering Jesus' prayer to send the Holy Spirit to be with your people. Today we celebrate the dawn of the church. On this holy day of Pentecost, you spoke through flame and fire. Your advocates spoke truth in our world. At Pentecost, you celebrated the gifts of diversity and cultures. 
as we gather through the power of the Holy Spirit, may you hear our heart's language of prayer and praise. Your helper, your advocate, offers peace to every troubled heart. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, you calm every anxious heart. We bring our prayers of joys and concerns to you. O oh God, hear our prayers. You spin the planet, turning one month into the next. And we come to you in awe and hope and worry, wondering what this month and this day and this hour will bring. As this new month begins, we pray for Raquel and the Hernandez family as they grieve the loss of their beloved Evelyn. For all who are grieving the loss of loved ones. For Justin, son of Judy's friend Alexis to be with him and to give him strength for all who are in recovery and who need support and love. For the war weary and those in danger, for the grieving and those in pain, for those hurting, for those who cause pain, for those who are suffering injustices. We pray for those who are currently sick with COVID, for those living with long COVID, for those living with chronic ailments and receiving treatment. We pray for those who are feeling sad and living with mood disorders, for those who are at the end of their lives. Oh God, your people need you. Oh God, we need you to help us to break the cycle of violence, for violence will only bring more violence. Help us, O oh God, to replace the fear in our hearts with love and your hope. Spin our hearts to you again, we pray. Lift our hearts in awe and peace. You are steadfast and present. You hear our prayers and we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the signs and wonders in our lives. We rejoice in the diversity of gifts that you have blessed us with. We are your peacemakers, dream keeper, keepers, your hands and feet for your mission in the world to serve those in need. We are your people, we lead by example, we lead by love. And the world will know that we are Christians by our love in both words and action. Come Holy Spirit, bring us new dreams, new visions and new possibilities. And we celebrate your love, we rejoice in your presence. And we pray for God's, your church, around the world, as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Divided tongues, as a fire, appeared among them, uh, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in, another, in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation in, under heaven living in Jerusalem. And, this sound, and, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what 
was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I shall show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. A reading from the Gospel according to John, which is on page 983 in your Pew Bible. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show me the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father dwells in me, does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The word of the Lord, the word of God, for the people of God.
Please pray with me. O loving Creator God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and eternal source of life. Amen. Every time I read the Pentecost story, I am filled with hope and optimism. There is such a tremendous sense of togetherness and unity in this story. A picture of our early church, our early spiritual ancestors coming together, this wildly diverse group of people from all over, sitting together, laughing together, maybe not getting each other's humor, eating together, maybe eating some new and strange food and liking it, or not liking it, listening to each other's stories and trying to understand, trying to connect, and moving into a stronger sense of community, shaping what that looks like, feels like, imagining, dreaming, envisioning. It is an inclusive vision that I hold dear to my heart because it is a vision in which I have a place. We all have a place. The very first thing, what was the very first thing that the Holy Spirit what was the very first thing that the Holy Spirit did? The Holy Spirit empowered many to speak in other languages. And at the same time, each person heard the testimony in his or her native language. It would be Reverend Park speaking Korean and you heard him. In Korean, it understood every word, or Italian, French, Spanish. Imagine that. It's not just the words, it's the emotion, the feeling, the heart that is conveyed through the words, through the body, through the voice. We know we can hear a voice and we feel love. We know we hear a voice and we feel understood and heard. And those fiery tongues that rested on each of them, well, I like to think of them as being universal translators. And for those Trekkie among us, we know what a universal translator does. You can take any language and you hear it with clarity. And so those fiery tongues are like universal translator headsets. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. She is a universal translator of God. And the Spirit brings people together. And the diversity of human languages and cultures is a gift from God. To be cherished. To be honored. To be respected. They are not barriers or problems. And so it is so fitting that the Holy Spirit came during Pentecost, which is also known as Shavuot. Shavuot was originally an agricultural festival marking the beginning of the wheat festival, the wheat harvest. And it celebrated new life and new crops by offering a gift of first fruits of the earth to God in gratitude and praise. It is the second of three fe festivals that the Jewish people observe and celebrate. It was a time for new beginnings and new commitment. It was the dawn of a new church, the birth of our Christian church. The apostles and those who gathered became a new community of faith, shaped into new dimensions of being by the Holy Spirit. 
and the Spirit did not homogenize the early church. The Spirit did not make everyone speak one language, although maybe one language, the language of love, God's love. The first gift of languages was intact, and this Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who was there in Pentecost, was there at the time of creation, before creation itself, throughout our human history, always calling us to God, always calling us to love, always calling us to be instruments of God's love, peace, and justice in the world, to be the body and feet that carry out God's mission in the world. And on that first Pentecost day, everyone asked, what does it mean? What's happening? And that question remains today for us. What does a Pentecost mean to us today? As the church, what does it mean? How will this beautiful vision of inclusivity, acceptance, and togetherness empower us today to do God's work in the world, to live according to God's will? Who is our neighbor? How are we going to heal the divisions that exist among God's people and within the church, the body of Christ? And in what way will we repair the fractured relationship between humanity and the rest of God's creation? And Jesus is telling us here today, with the power and the help of the Holy Spirit, we can do greater things than he did. What a promise. Isn't that amazing? How is that possible? But Jesus tells us all things are possible. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Will we trust? Will we believe? Will we enter into this new dawn, this new moment with the Holy Spirit? Because right now, a lot of us are feeling very stuck. A lot of us are feeling like things are, a lot of things feel impossible. And so can we pray for what is, what feels like the impossible? Can we pray for hope? Can we pray for the breath, the breath of the Holy Spirit that gives us life? Will we allow the Holy Spirit to remake us? Renew us for today. During the winter months, Jorgen and I visited the garden every week. And there were days when it was blanketed with snow. And as we were inching out of winter in mid-March, the garden was covered with fallen leaves. I mean, so much, like inches of dead leaves. And everything looked lifeless. And honestly, I felt discouraged when I looked at the bleak state of the garden and not even the knowledge that spring was right around the corner could encourage me. I was filled with doubt and fear. And then, one week later, to my surprise, I see green sprouts, sprouts blooming. I had no idea what flowers they were, none. Because I'm still learning to identify different flowers. I was so elated. I thought, wow. And then came, if you remember, the roller coaster of weather, warm, hot, cold. The evenings were cold. I worried. And then, 
on April 17th, Easter Sunday, guess what? The daffodils and the hyacinths all bloomed. Purple, white, yellow. I was speechless. There was new life. Gardening has taught me how to practice patience. I am practicing waiting as I work. I watered, I pruned, I removed more fallen leaves, and I listened to the garden. And some days, I did nothing but sit in the garden. I entered into the rhythm of the life of the garden, and some days were easier than others. And as the days and weeks passed, more new life emerged, more colors of purple, pink, green, yellow, white began to pop. And I invite you, after lunch, to visit a pollinator garden. But I was not alone. Jorgen and Jenny helped. We are a team. We are a community of gardeners. We work together. We share what we know with one another. We, are, we give each other a lot of grace. I have learned and I am practicing that both experience and knowledge are important. They are essential and they live in harmony, always seeking balance. And gardening has given me an insight into how I am part of something bigger than myself. Something mysterious. Something divine. And I am guided by the Holy Spirit. This Pentecost Sunday is the 50th and last Sunday of the Easter season. Pentecost makes Easter, Easter. And Easter makes Christmas, Christmas. Because Christmas brings us Jesus to Easter and the resurrection. And the resurrection is made sense to us with Pentecost. Because Pentecost is when we begin to truly practice the life of faith, when we live into the story of Jesus, it tells us what that looks like, what could be possible. And the Holy Spirit reveals that all is possible if we are open to the Spirit. And the Spirit will bring life and news. It is a miracle. It is glorious. And so today we celebrate that gift, the gift of life, the gift of Pentecost. Let us walk together in this new time. Let us imagine how we can be church today, the challenges that we are facing. And as we do so, let us be open to the signs and wonders of God's presence in our lives, here and around the world. Let us always reach out to one another and desire connection. Let us live into Jesus' story of love, compassion, generosity, and hospitality. Let us embrace this beautiful vision in which all are part of it. Today, wherever you are, for those who are worshiping with us online, make time to celebrate the Pentecost. Do something celebratory for our Christian church's birthday. Have some fun. Enjoy the day. We are God's people. We are spirit-filled community. We give thanks to God for this day, for every day. We give thanks for the gift of the church,
for our ancestors who had a vision for us. And here we are. And so we will continue in that vision for those who come after us. We give thanks for the gift of faith, for the gift of love. Celebrate church today. Have joy. Have fun. God bless you. Amen. Because of our love for the divine giver, we seek ways to share our love through our treasures, talents, and time. Whether we give in this hour or throughout the week, may we remember that God's Spirit encircles these gifts with hope.
in the communion cup holder in front of you. As we come to God's table, let us prepare our hearts anew to be in communion with one another and with the risen Christ.
Drink this, the cup of the new covenant, the cup of salvation. Amen. Our closing hymn is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number eight in the Pilgrim Hymnal. Please stand if you like.
with each gust of wind, may we reach out to the God of inspiration. In each flicker of flame, may we follow the Christ of light. For the Spirit of God surrounds us, filling our hearts with dreams, our minds with vision, and our souls with the energy to create the realm of God on earth.